What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Moose episode 146. Only four more episodes until 150. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Turford, alongside the ghost with the most Drew McMillan. The, the sesquicentennials, that's what that is. Sesquicentennial. Oh, that took about 12 seconds before I got confused. <laughs> I'm also very confused right now. I don't know what that 150 means. 150 is a sesquicentennial. It's also the amount of original Pokemon. It's true. You're not also, wrong. Also, well, unless you it, count it, It's me. immune. Yeah. yeah. Of course, the, the disembodied voice you heard, the uh, Broccoli, Brock McLaughlin. I'm all confused now because for the last, yeah. like, three months, I went to Brock first. You yeah. did. And then Drew. Yeah. And I decided to switch up this week because I feel like yeah. Drew kind of felt left out. You know, not being the first person. Well, he's yeah. usually always Going putting back, back up his pants at the beginning, so we had to give him that extra time. Yeah, it's true. Mm. I mean, yeah, I'm usually getting the pants back up. Because yeah. before we get started, we got to uh, touch ding-dongs. Yes, it's a ritual. Yeah. And uh, I just keep my pants off, where Drew likes to be have some class and put them back on. It's really, it's about warmth, because it's real drafty in the studio, mm. so, yeah. Mm. Exactly. So, Wait. of, of <laughs> course... <laughs> The, well, Brock Laz, let me explain what show you're listening to. Of course, this is the Game Moose Podcast. We come to you each week at Monday uh, noon Eastern Standard Time over on game-moose.com, as well as podcast services around the globe. You can find us on our website as well, game-moose.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at game underscore moose underscore cast and on Facebook at facebook.com slash game moose podcast. You can also uh, rate us on iTunes, rate us on your podcast service of choice. Leave us a review. All that stuff totally helps. Uh, if you're listening to this on YouTube as well, uh, leave us a like. Subscribe to the channel. Tell tell Drew on Twitter that you want his barbecue recipe, and, and he'll do it. He'll yeah, send you it. Absolutely. I mean that that was our call to action for a long time when we had, when we tried to get questions for the show bro. back uh, in the day. Yeah, we gave Drew, we gave up with that. We one because the the few questions we did get weren't good. Well, they were then, some of them were okay. They were then, very broad questions. <laughs> and then, do you like video games? What do nope. you think about video games? The answer is no. Do you actually play <laughs> I don't like them in games? one bit? Do you actually play video we games? We do this only for the money, not because we like the video games. So, uh, the other reason I bring that up, of course, is that Drew, of course, would offer his famous barbecue recipe for anyone who wrote a question in. Yeah. And no one ever wanted it for yeah. some reason. Apparently, Drew's barbecue wasn't good enough. Yeah. I want it, Drew. I just want you to do it for me, though. Oh, uh, okay. That's and I pretend to listen. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can you can come over. We should we should have a barbecue party. Maybe mm-hmm. uh, we should we, make some moose. Yeah, we should barbecue we some should moose barbecue and play some, some games. I've so. never cooked moose before. Mm, well, there's a so time for, like, I think now is good as time. Is that like the ritual sacrifice for having moose in the title of our <clears> show? That uh, for like our 150 episode, we have to cook a, a moose. I, I think so. A, a game meets website right now. I, I think we can get a moose. Yeah, I gotta see we if probably there's could. any moose for sale. Excellent. I mean. Should we though? I saw the this great viral video of of, uh, of moose eating someone's pumpkins on their front porch in Alaska. Mm. It looked real neat. That's cute. Yeah. But if I mean the moose is already dead, you know it's got to get eaten sometime. Yeah, I mean, and I've been, wrong, I've been bro, playing yeah. so much Red Dead, I've been killing a lot of animals. You know, I got you're just too used to killing moose. Are there I really, wonder if people like who are, are really vegetarians moose? and have like very strong animal lovers can play this game because there's some disgusting scenes of cutting apart animals. But I'm sure all that stuff's optional. Well, you gotta eventually get the, the stuff. Yeah, you're fine. not gonna make much progress. It's like when you play Far Cry out. Three. You don't need that extra wallet. You don't need to go massacre hundreds of your hundreds of sharks to get your shark wallet but, uh, if you don't want to. Black Angus Meats here in Toronto has elk, but they don't have moose. Yeah, what's going on there, man? Yeah, they, they have a wide selection of game birds such <laughs> as hen, ostrich, and pheasant. I wouldn't call ostrich a game bird, though. I like ostrich, though. <laughs> ostrich are good burgers. Yeah, but they... This episode sponsored by Black Angus. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't hunt that ostrich, though. That was, no. That's a farm-raised That's ostrich. a farm-raised, yeah. That's it, was, there's no the wild birds. ostriches in Canada, for those those wondering. There's wild boar, though. I'll fuck with wild boar. Wild boar is delicious. Uh, wild boar is very good. Yeah. yeah How could you best. eat Pumbaa like that? Well, maybe... that The same way I'd eat any other piece of meat. Yeah. Yeah. Happily. I, I jammed down on Timon, too. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give me Simba, baby. Yeah. Whoa, what? Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, can't eat All right. Right. Okay, yeah. never mind. Yeah, I crossed See the, where we crossed the line. Yeah, I crossed the line at, like, tertiary-level predators. <laughs> okay. <you know? laughs> so this is the, the Food We Eat podcast. Yes, uh, and brought to you by foodweeat.com. Yeah. There's prob- that's probably actually a real one. Anyways, coming up on today's show, we're going to talk all about all the games we've been playing, because we've been playing a lot of games. But first, 
There was a big event in Mexico City this weekend. Yeah. Uh, our friends at Xbox decided to throw a little party for all the all the people in Mexico City, and they had a uh, Xbox uh, inside Xbox uh, big reveal show. They, they talked about Xbox stuff for two hours. Major Nelson on Twitter before the show said, "This isn't quite E3 level, but dang close." Uh, Those were his words exactly. It did have- M- M- Major Nelson is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do respect to Major Nelson. Y- y'all wrong. There, yeah. That was some serious club vibe. I did yeah. not like... You know, shout out to those happy people in Mexico. It was a lot to handle. There was yeah. a lot of screaming, and it was a lot of fanboyism. It was a lot of, like... And it, and it reminded me of some of like the PlayStation stuff, too, where it was like... Like PSX or something? Yeah. yeah. Like, our dick's out. Yeah, check yeah. it out. Whoa. They Literally, they could have said, uh, like... Honestly, your Xbox is going to explode next week, and you're going to have to buy a new one. And people would have gone woo yeah. and lost it. Yeah. Like it Don't didn't matter what the they party. said; they would have just said anything. Except when the um, Kingdom Hearts director was talking, they didn't seem to want to <laughs> listen to him because they just kept shouting. Well, to be fair, it is Kingdom Hearts. Right? <gasps> Kingdom Hearts looks amazing. The bi- the big news is I'm that so excited. Winnie the Pooh is in it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm shocked they didn't announce Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 coming to I still think they're never coming. That's bizarre. I'm very certain. Uh, After this part, I don't think they're coming now. Yeah. I don't think it's happening. If it was going to happen, it would have happened. When they asked about, like, the final question, he's like, we have more to talk about. And then he's like, I just want to talk about Final Fantasy instead. I was like, Not not just any Final Fantasy, the greatest of all Final Fantasies, Final Fantasy 13, the trilogy, coming to back and back this week. Featuring Lightning Returns. Featuring Lightning Returns, the best game in that trilogy. That's a hot take. Yeah. To be fair, those games only got better. Like, Final Fantasy XIII, it was okay. It wasn't that great. But then XIII-2 was actually a pretty good game. Uh-huh. Well, 7, 8, 9, 10, then, 10, 2 are all coming too as well. But not this Not till next year. Yeah, not till next year. But it's also, this is back to back. So, yeah. I mean, if you already own these games, you, like me, you, you don't have to buy anything. Right, right, right is multiple copies of Lightning Returns. Oh, perfect. He'll be yeah. sending them out to some lucky viewers. Or <laughs> some lucky viewers. Are, you, are you kidding me? You think he ever part uh, with his copies of Lightning Returns? <laughs> well, I don't know. I have the collector's edition of Lightning Returns. Yeah, I've, I've seen that, it. Was, that was exclusive it's, to the Square Store. There's only 500 of them. It's a little oh. shrine. There's like a little lightning. Oh, uh, wow. Anyway, a little, little Final Fantasy-themed candles. Oh, you know, Drew, yeah. up until last year, I carried around a pocket watch. A lightning pocket watch. Fact. From yeah. the Final Fantasy XIII mm-hmm. Lightning Returns Collector's Edition. Ryan is very serious about how much he loves Lightning. That's and, cool. And her return. Yeah. Yes. But Lightning Returns, I think, is a fantastic game. It, the story doesn't make any sense, but you'll play it for the combat because the combat's great. See, yeah. I would play Final Fantasy for the story. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. True. combat. You I don't ever think of Final Fantasy for its combat. But, Which is why I like Six, because Six has really good combat. Mm-hmm. It's true. You're not wrong about Five that. Five characters. Uh, you know, like each of those characters, like getting a character to learn a new skill through the Esper system, like requires a lot of investment, and it means that you have to be like a little bit more sort of strategic long term. Whereas, like the Materia system meant that you could just someone could just learn something and they could give it to anyone. Like anyone could have. I know it was great. It. it was dumb. It was awful. <laughs> Did not like. It was it. one of the best systems of all the Final yeah. Fantasy games. It took all the meaning out of the strategy and the investment. Also, veering away from that, Square also did have a press conference of their own this week that was very strange. Yeah. <laughs> to announce the closing of the DLC for Final Fantasy XV. Yeah, so the the <coughs> director of Final Fantasy XV left the company this week. Yes, and during the press conference. During the press conference, <laughs> and they announced that there was like a whole like year's worth of Final Fantasy XV DLC still coming, and they just canceled it. Which is crazy, because the game ended up selling really well and being pretty favorably repeat. But, but apparently the, the sales were not up to Square's expectations. Well, it was... More it, about that. it did have a lot of problems at the start. It did. Well, I it, mean, it, let's be real. They they worked on that game for a really long time. Yeah. They put a lot into it. Like, allegedly they had teams out there for years, yeah. like, photographing places in, like, absurd detail and mapping out, like, cave systems. It was a game like 12 years in the making. It was never going to recuperate the amount of money they put into it. Yeah, I'm not in surprised. A mi- in a million years. I- I'm not surprised that they didn't, like, firebomb everybody involved in that studio. Like, they really you know, let it go. They really, like, gave it a second shot at life. Yeah. It came out, what, two years ago now? Yeah. And they, and they can't keep trying. They, can't, they, they have the whole, like, mobile game thing. Yeah. And, There's one more DLC planned. Yeah. That'll come out, and then that's it. And that's it. That's it. It's over. And then we can go to Final Fantasy 16. No, nope, that's never coming. <laughs> I, I'd be surprised if Square Enix is not in, like, 
dire financial straits at this point. Like that company has been like on the rocks like since that stupid fucking movie they made. I think a quiet man will set them set, get them back. We're, is we're, Man, uh, it's square, square Man? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> send out an email about it. We're going to talk about that later. Okay. Oh, we should. No. <laughs> we should veer back into Xbox territory because okay. that's, why, that's why we're here. Okay. So, uh, besides the Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts stuff, we also got a, a release date, a real release date for Crackdown 3. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we cannot talk about this without talking about how they announced this. With the greatest Terry Crews commercial ever. The most uncomfortably... I would say greatest. <laughs> uncomfortably, like, poorly done uh, uh, thing featuring Terry Crews in a long time. I've seen a lot of his early stuff. But how did Terry Crews get into that bag? Oh, that how did that happen? That wasn't Terry Crews. That was Commander... What's his name? Yeah. Like, it's interesting because they have Terry Crews, and the character Terry Crews plays, and they establish in the fiction of the ad, that they are two different people, and that one is constantly harassing the other by way of somehow infiltrating, like, <laughs> his refrigerator, gym bag, and home. And there was the whole thing, like, the Bugs Bunny-esque, like, car- car- cardboard cutout moment. Mm-hmm. Look, guys, if, you, if you're trying to be funny, hire some co- comedy writers. The whole something. show was trying to be funny, and there wasn't very many jokes that landed. Yeah. Let's be honest. We'll, we'll, talk, a, we'll get to the Larry room. Herb uh, uh, Black Friday oh video in a bit. Oh, uh, Jesus. So, so, yeah, so it's coming out. And they came with it. They announced uh, some kind of Battle Royale-ish mode. No, no. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like a, a, a uh, No, it's a multiplayer uh, um, team mode, like you mentioned. Yeah. But it's actually returning from Crackdown 2. Right. So there's actually a mode in Crackdown 2 that's returning. Every time mode. they've shown this game, it looks like they've shown the exact same part of the map. Yeah. And level. It Ooh. has not looked like it has changed since the very first trailer. Maybe they just don't want to spoil the rest of the map for you. Every, everything I feel is, like it's going to look very similar. It's like neon y tron ish kind of. But that's, that's and, just Crackdown's look, though. Yeah. Reviews from the yeah. demo on the floor say this is very repetitive already. Yeah. yeah. But that I mean, was I the problem with Crackdown 2. That was the biggest problem with Crackdown 2, was the same loop every 30 seconds. I remember playing the demo going, well, I need to. I don't ever need to play that again because I, of the slice that I played, I don't want to do that again. And by all counts, that's exactly what the game was. I am not looking forward to this game. I am cautiously optimistic. I want it to be good. I loved Crackdown 1, and I hope it's good. So Hoping there, for good things. If you things. haven't played Crackdown 1, it's free right now. It's true. You can go get it. So we should mention the date, though. February 15th, uh, which is the same day as Jump Force and Dead or Alive 6. It, it was it originally tweeted. This is something weird that I didn't know until yesterday. Originally, uh, we talked about, about this on the show when Xbox tweeted the game was going to come out on February 22nd, which is the same day as Anthem and Days Gone was supposed to come out that day, as well as Metro Exodus. But then, apparently, they deleted that tweet, like, a couple days later, and none of us really noticed. And then, they announced this new date, as if nothing fucks. happened. Sneaky fuck. So it's just weird that they would, like, hold the date and then, like, uh, well, provide not, a different date. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Uh, here's why. That's the day after Valentine's Day. It's true. And nothing says romance like playing Crackdown with your partner. Are you so, sure that Are you sure that uh, the real ex- answer to that question would be playing Dead or Alive Six with your partner, Drew? Because that co- also comes out. Or like, Jump you, Force. Or Jump Force. You gotta I, play I, Goku with and Vegeta. Food. With your, I, I'm gonna throw that out there. <laughs> play all of them. It's true. I mean, I'm excited for all th- yeah. uh, for at least two of the three of them. Dead or Alive and, and Jump Force. I'm really excited. Yeah. I didn't like my time with Jump Force, so I am not excited for that one. Oh, you play? You ended up playing the beta. At E3, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, but you haven't pl- you didn't play no. the open beta though? No. Okay, because I heard from other people it was improved, and then when I played it, I liked it. Okay. Right. Um, but you like that sort yeah. of game. Right? That's also true. That's also true. It yeah. feels very much like Dragon Ball. Yeah. And, you, and you have a connection to the characters, so. Yeah. Well, there's that. Plus, I, it feels like every other Namco fighter, which I like, because they, they it feels like then there were no games and the uh, My Hero Academia games. And right. Games. It's just not for me. Yeah. I get that. We just Here's hope and Crackdown's good. Yeah. Again, I, I don't know why they decided to add another mode on top of the already struggling. Well, we already knew progress. that multiplayer was coming to the game in sure. some capacity. We just don't know how. Right. Yeah. Now we kind of know that this, uh, I think it's called, it's not called Wrecking Crew. It's called what Wrecking the, Something. What is their terrible hashtag for it? Uh, the, the, oh my God. Kick, kick it, up your boom? Kick up your boom or something? Pick, pick up your boom? Pick, pick, pick up your boom? Spend out your boom? Yeah. Uh, Deliver the boom. It's real, real cheesy. It's, it involves the boom, it, it and involves, I did not like it. 
Because they, they didn't like the boom. Well, I the, don't the, like the boom. The, the, the announcer, the, the MC for the show or whatever said, said the, like the phrase uh, in, in, in announcing the trailer. He's like, uh, you know, here's Terry. Remember to, to kick up your boom. That'll make sense after. <laughs> it didn't make sense after. No. no. Well, I mean, it made sense in that the fact that the hashtag's called that. Yeah. That's about it. Um, so other things they announced... Uh, they announced uh, a up whole bunch your boom. of booms. Up your boom. Up, up your boom. boom. Don't like that one bit. Is that like you're you're upgrading, or is boom a euphemism for your butt? And they're going to put it up your boom. I think it's right up your butt. You got to you got to step hole? up your boom. Okay, you gotta step up your boom. I'm going to put it up your boom hole. It's something. Yeah, it is something. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> All right. So other things they announced. They announced a whole bunch of stuff coming to Game Pass, including uh, PUBG. Which we kind of also coming with the PS4. Uh, yeah, it's coming. It's coming to Game Pass. Uh, how how Blade? How they, long? How long until they buy officially buy the PUBG studio? I don't know if they ever will. They uh, could. I mean, they basically have it. I mean, they, they're so invested in it right now. Well, it's coming to PlayStation, right? Yeah, now. I was, was going to say if it was if they I think it, if it was going to happen, it would happen. I thought yeah. they were going to have big PUBG news. I thought so too, like a map or something. They no. did. They did a big PUBG news. It's coming to Game Pass. That's buy Game right. Pass. Yeah. They really want people to buy right. Game Pass. They really, really, really wanted people to buy Game Pass. Well, and then you can sit with that money you save. You can spend forty to five dollars on those Joker and Harley Quinn skins. Those are really bad. They're really terrible. Yeah, they're really awful. Hey, they're how much? Like, for those who don't know, Brock, because okay. I don't think they made a big deal. So about this, this week, how how much are these skins for for Harley Quinn and, and Joker? Joker's twenty dollars. Harley Quinn is twenty five. When you get a weapon, more. they're not up upgradable at all. They don't do anything, and people saying that, oh, but Fortnite Legendary skins are $20. First off, you can earn that for free with V-Bucks. V-Bucks are pretty easy to come by in Fortnite, so you don't have to spend real money, and Legendary skins are upgradable and changeable. These are just terrible licensed skins. They're not good. For example, the NFL skins that came out are $15, and you get every team jersey with that. So you get 30 teams. Thirty bucks for fifteen bucks. Is that some Fortnite? Yeah, Fortnite. Fortnite. Okay. Because Fortnite's football mode came out on Friday, or not football mode, but football jerseys because they partnered with the NFL. Oh, and you can take any. Oh, yeah. The NFL let that happen? I guess so. Because well, you can take any with like uh, an emoji, not like through the NFL yeah. like mode. Yeah, because yeah. like the NFL is not a fan of the, They're not the, a the fan. new situation. No, no, no. Yeah. How dare those NFL players disrespect uh, their country like that? Yeah, well, Colin Kaepernick. Something, something. All right, we're going to save that for another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, getting back to the Game Pass, we got um, Hellblade, which this is your PSA. Play Hellblade when it comes to Game Pass next month because it's the, awesome. the full title of that game is Hellblade Sinuous Sacrifice. Exactly. Uh, and it's a video game that Ryan really likes. I really, really, really like that. It has some really cool, Hellblade's really fucking awesome. awesome, really weird storytelling, and, and it looks really pretty. And make sure if you play it, play it with headphones. Does it, is it X enhanced at this point? It, is. it must be. It yeah. is. That's going to be a game that's like gorgeous. It, it's it came one of the best like, looking games on the X. There's what, 160 games X enhanced now? Yep. Maybe more? They Including do. Final Fantasy 13, 13 <laughs> 2. And Lightning Returns. Uh, they, yeah, they announced uh, a bunch of new titles and a bunch of back cap compact titles that are X enhanced. Uh, X enhanced. Well, they so announced four because the other one, uh, other back compact one was uh, Civ Red. Which is also a really good yes, game. Yes, Civ Rev is coming, to, which is a great game. If you like Civilizations and you don't want to drag out the old PC with the mouse. <laughs> if you don't want to play for days, Civ Rev is the way to play Civ Yeah, Civ. And, you, and you play with a controller and kind of be a little bit more casual about it, which is nice. Yes. Uh, it's a really with mouse and keyboard support. Well, now there's that's the other thing. Segway. Wow. We should well talk done. about that. Good so mouse you, and keyboard support, we already knew it was coming, yep. but we didn't know what games were going to support it. Um, so we do know that Fortnite Fuck yeah. is going to be the first game to support it. And you'll be matched with people on mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Which is nice. you choose, and in fact, that's actually the way uh, they said it for all these games yeah. that they announced. Uh, the other one, big one was Warframe, uh, which I know a lot of people like. I've never gotten into Warframe, despite the fact that as ninjas, it can't pull me into it, I guess. I don't know. I didn't mind it. Yeah. It was fun. It's a it's a game it's a very Canadian game. It's made in London, Ontario. Yes. I've never gone back yeah. to it, but I had a fun night with it. Yeah. Um, if you ever want to watch some really good like video content as related to the games and get an understanding of like how games are developed and what kind of weird shit goes on, watch the no clip documentary about Warframe. It is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, it was one of those games where like the studio was like you know basically days away from shutting down and they needed to do something. 
they published Warframe well before they thought they were going to, and like they were pivoting and they then they made it free to play, and like the mm-hmm. whole story of Warframe is is just absolutely harrowing. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people tried that, like, Warframe for the first time when it came to PS4, because it was a PS4 launch title. Yeah. And it was the only one that was free to play, so even if you didn't buy a game, oh, the PlayStation 4, you had long. a Warframe. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's Which been around crazy. that long. And it's it's a completely different game. Yeah. If you if you were to play what Warframe was, like, six years ago versus what it is now, it's a different yeah. world, man. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell it got popular, because they got that money. Put into it. They, they got smart. They They... They made some smart plays, and they ended up turning a, ga- a, a game that was looking like it wasn't going to be profitable it, 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 in a world where they weren't getting the kind of investment that they wanted to to make the games that they wanted to. Yeah. They pivoted and did some, some clever stuff with uh, uh, their financing model, and it paid off. It was extremely risky, and, and like I said, they came very close to shutting down several times. Warframe, cool game, check it out. So uh, there were also a few other uh, indie titles that they announced with uh, mouse and keyboard support. Um, I just don't have the li- full list in pl- front of me, but uh, you can check more of those out on xbox.com. They're going to announce some more later. I think at the Game Awards they said they'll talk more about mouse and keyboard support. They, we also know that Razer is making the official Xbox mouse and keyboard. Next year. Next year. Who knows what that's going to be, if it's going to be like a weird mouse and keyboard or... It's just going to be probably one black that's wireless. And, probably black and gray with an Xbox button on it. Yeah. Exactly. It'll probably just have the Xbox. It'll be interesting circle. to see. Like, I, I like the idea of there being, like, an Xbox specific. I think it's game. great. Razer's a good company. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. That's sweet. I love my... That's I, a big win. I love my mouse. I have a Razer mouse that is Xbox. fucking the best. Microsoft continues to blur the line between computer and console. Yeah. Keep it up. Although we didn't get the one announcement we had hoped for, which is Warcraft Recovery. We did not get the Warcraft or, announcement, or even uh, like uh, Age of Empires. Yeah, yeah, we were secretly hoping for one of the, those two things. They could do a new Age of Empires game that could be Master of Well, there, is, yeah, because there's one the the remake's coming to PC, so I was hoping eventually we'd see it on Xbox. Right, because like, they said it was going to be public. PC only because mouse and keyboard. But mm-hmm. now they have mouse and keyboard on uh, the uh, Xbox. The Xbox, why not? So I guess one of the things about that game too is also it has it, it's got a lot of like. Requires a lot of graphic fidelity. Like you need to be able to see your little units and stuff like that. It'd be hard to do that from the couch. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the other big piece of information we got was the the sale of two new studios, <coughs> like the purchase of two new studios by Microsoft. This is huge, but it was stuff we knew was coming. Yeah. Well, the one we didn't know it was coming was in Exile. Yeah, that one is out of nowhere. A r- RPG studio. It does not surprise me because yeah. they have a, they're really closely tied to Obsidian. Which, of uh, course, is the other studio that was purchased. Yeah. Obsidian was long rumored. Well, uh, yeah. not even rumored. They confirmed that they were in negotiations mm-hmm. a month ago. They said, we're in oh, negotiations right. to buy Obsidian. Yeah. Which Jason Schreier broke that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like and, after and, that and, story, and, they came and, out and, and Microsoft, Microsoft said, yes, we are trying to make this happen. And I think they knew they had to say that because, again, like, they know that people want to play Xbox. They just don't have the games, yeah. right? So, so they're, they're trying to say, like, look, we're really trying to turn this ship around, man. But the show seems yeah. to have done because there was no new announcements, like yeah. big first party announcements. The fact that new. these were like this, the the one more thing announcements. Yeah, yeah. I think this Seven is it. This is it for Xbox One. That's it. They have a new console coming out next year, 2019. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They must. I mean, this they must be the strategy now. We know Scarlet's coming, and actually, I was thinking the same thing that you were it thinking, Brock. Like if the this announce like this conference conference in quotations, of course is is very telling because it tells me it screams loud and clear that this is like nintendo right before it launched the switch yeah where it was like here are the titles that are coming next year and then that's it huh. and then the, the like everything else is for scarlet the fact that we didn't hear about gears 5 or halo yeah at this event or even like and when ori uh 2 is coming out yeah stuff like that um, They're going to have the best launch fucking lineup on a new console. Yeah, I it's think it's going to be crazy. I mean, Gears Five could conceivably be a launch title for Scarlet. Sure. Um, I think they're going to launch with a lot of these new things, though. like the new Playground game, the new Obsidian game, because it sounds like Obsidian's been working on a game already yeah. for a while. That's what they were kind of hinting at I when mean, they like, did the video. The last thing that they were doing was uh, st- uh, 
Stick of Truth, right? No, not Stick of Truth. Uh, the Fractured But Whole. No, they, no, they uh, didn't, Pillars didn't, of Eternity too. I think. They didn't do Fractured But Whole. Really? Yeah, right. they didn't do Fractured But Whole. Oh, it was Ubisoft and Turtles. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's why. That's then. why Stick of Truth is way better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Pillars of Eternity too. I think was yeah. their newest game. Yeah. Which was very well received. Yeah. Well, and, yeah and, it mean, did, and it came out like a couple years ago. Again, too. PC RPG nuts love those yeah. guys. I mean, like, <laughs> Obsidian is former Black Isle people, which is basically the, the the studio that made Fallout and Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> and they have a lot of great games under their belt besides Stick of Truth. We all also had New Vegas, yeah. KOTOR 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think they're, they're a really good studio, and I'm interested to see what they do for Microsoft. And like Brock says, <laughs> It sounds like they have a new game coming soon, and this must be the reason why Mic- like Microsoft must have caught wind of what this new game was. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like EA when um, uh, BioWare was developing Mass Effect, or or when they were developing the, the Old Republic, and that's when they swooped in to buy that studio as well. So something something's up with that. I think they're just going to rely on some idea at Xbox games, third party games, yeah. and we then do know that have a killer. The one announcement that we did mention: the Winter Arca- of Arcade, we know is coming as right. well, which is. Four really big indie titles that are curated coming next month. One will month. probably be below. Yeah, or, probably. Or at, uh, Ashen. We also know the the Messenger is supposed to be coming to Xbox at one point, and I wouldn't be surprised if that I thought it was already on Xbox. That's it's only on Switch right now. And PC. I thought I had it on Xbox. Nope, oh. not yet. Well, I'm confused. It's supposed to be coming to PS4 and Xbox at some point, and I'm pretty sure that that's going to be one of those one of the games. Oh. Um, but yeah, like so that we know that that's coming, but it feels like. This event, uh, combined with what we saw at the end of E3, really shows that Microsoft is really building towards the future. They're all in on Scarlet at this point, and I think that that's what they're, where their focus was. With yeah. this event. Like, I, would, I would be very surprised if we get many more announcements that like, the Game Awards is the only other announcement show we have this year. Yeah. Besides that, until E3 of next year, like, I think we'll get a Scarlet official reveal sometime before E3, and it'll probably be out fall of 2019. It'll be up before PS5 then, because I, I still think PS5 is still fall 2020, um, and I think that's what they're banking on, is these new studios really to help out, the, help out their, expa- their uh, exclusive lineup. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a big lineup. Yeah. Uh, but Drew, Brock, Brock and I talked a lot about the event. Uh, what did you think about the event overall? Uh, so I got <laughs> to watch the first half of it, and then I had to run. I got as far as uh, the end of the crackdown thing, um, but overall, like the tone of it was meh. Like, yeah. you know, like like we said, it was just like it was a big Xbox party. Yeah, you know, which is I mean, whatever. It, it, it's their event, but I, I was really more interested in seeing and hearing some new exciting things. Don't get me wrong. I think the fact that they purchased an XL and Obsidian is huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, basically, Black Isle is back. Which is incredible. I mean, it's one of the one of the most amazing studios. Plus, they have the backing of a, a first party publisher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so hopefully, that means they can do something really exciting and really interesting. They one of the problems that studios had for years is you know like trying to get funding for their projects, right? Exactly. And trying to get chances to make big games. Some of the 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 things that they've had to do are basically take licensed games and offshoots. So we had things like uh, 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 KOTOR 2. Yeah. And, and South Park, even. And South Park and uh, uh, New Vegas, right? Which was interesting because it was a return to them working on their... Yeah. Uh, on what, what essentially was the the game that they created. Uh, and it, that was basically the, the game that they made. What, what was New Vegas? A big part of it was basically the pitch for Fallout 3 that never got made, a.k.a. Van Buren. So... Now that they have like a ton of money and they can basically do whatever they want, it'll be amazing to see what they're going to do. Yeah. Right? Even Pillars of Eternity was a lot of them saying, like, well, we're going to really do what we want, but they still were constrained budget wise, right? Yeah. So, you know, it'd be really cool to see, you know, how they can really take off. Like, what's going to be like their Mass Effect, essentially, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Where, you know, because Mass Effect is basically the game that uh, BioWare made when they. When, when, when the chains were off, right? When, yeah. when they didn't have to worry about uh, how much money they did or didn't have. Like, they could just kind of just go nuts. Yeah. It was the so. one game that, like, the, the game where they had a, a very, like, they didn't have to worry about the license. Yeah. And, and to yeah. To reason to buy it. 
and you know their funding was secured and they had some security in terms of like a publisher and stuff like that. So that's where Obsidian is now, right? They're, they've, they've been in this weird spot for a long time, mm-hmm. and now you're right. Like having the backing of a big studio is a good thing. It doesn't mean they're going to have to compromise their vision or anything. No, like that. Anything, it, it, it sounds like it's the opposite of that. And and yeah, and like and they said. Straight up, like no, like this. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to set them free. We want them to do what they do, and that's make great games, yeah. right? And uh, you know, like Microsoft said, said as much at the conference. You know, whether or not they live up to that, or is, is, a, is a matter of yeah. time, and we'll see what happens. But I mean, they don't. Microsoft has never really seemed like a company that interferes <laughs> too heavily with their studios. No. no. I mean, that's not the impression I get. That's more of like an Activision and EA. You don't really hear anything about that. I think we saw a little bit of it during the Kinect era, like well, with, with, with Rare. But, uh, and yeah, where they were, yeah, where they were like jamming. Uh, Rest in peace, Skillbound. <laughs> yeah. Where they were kind of like jamming Kinect down everyone's throats. Yeah, but I think that's changed since then. Well, yeah, and I feel like a lot of that has changed in the last three years uh, when they sort of like shifted direction. Where they're like, no. Like, yeah, once they brought in Phil, like a, that philosophy really changed. Yeah, it was like no, like making an all-in-one entertainment center is not what we need to do. But Drew, how can you keep up with your NFL fantasy stats if you don't have the app to tell you about your fantasy points? That's a great question. And <laughs> I've just been lost for years. Of course, being able to do that. of course. Yeah, that, that I remember that that being like a ten-minute thing from the original Xbox One presentation. Yep. So yeah, it's all it's all good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, this this is. This was fine. It was not. It was not the reason to celebrate that they made it out to be. I get that they had to because you know Christmas and everything. They what we need now are games. Yep. Like, okay, yeah, you have a fucking awesome lineup of amazing studios developing games for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, we need games and not Void Bastards. We need real big games that yeah. are really exciting. The other thing too that I'm a little little concerned about with these acquisitions too is they don't have. A Naughty Dog. They don't have a Sony Santa Monica. They don't have, like, that, like... Out of all the studios they've acquired, they don't have that AAA... That pedigree? That pedigree, that that, that almost guaranteed game of the year every time they release a game. Contender yeah. I feel like Obsidian could Is, be that. Yep. Yeah. I feel Ninja Theory could also fit that bill. I could see... And especially the cooperation between those two studios. That's where, like, like you have places like where, like, Naughty Dog and Santa Monica were working together. Yeah. Right, doing amazing things like Naughty Dog. They were figuring out stuff with like the technology that no one else was figuring out, and then applying that across the board in cooperation with some of the other uh, uh, Sony studios. I could see you know things like Ninja Theory doing that kind of stuff, helping develop systems, and uh, that coming across uh, uh, to uh, you know uh, to Obsidian. Mm-hmm. So, all right. oh, okay. so. Let's transition from the Xbox event to what we've been playing. It's that time of year, folks. There's a million games coming out and not a lot of news. Uh, First of all, before we get to that, though, we should mention as well, the Game Awards are coming up. There are a lot of uh, announcements during the Xbox uh, conference to state that there's going to be news about things at the Game Awards. So expect that that's going to be like our last big news drop. Otherwise, pretty much most of our shows from here on out are going to be talking about the games we've been playing because there's a lot of them, folks. Yeah. Um, so Brock, you and I played a little game this week. Mm-hmm. We came to EA Access, so first of all, if you have EA Access, you can go play this now as well, if you'd like. Uh, Battlefield 5 came to EA Access this week. Uh, the game is out next week for pre-orders, like on, on Friday. Uh, and then the week after, if you don't pre-order it, essentially. But this is a demo, right? It is a 10-hour tr- full game trial. Okay. So no, not full game. Define well, not full technically game. full game. They call it a full game. You download the full game, but certain features are locked out, such as yeah. two of the three story campaigns, for example, are, are locked out. Uh, but none of the multiplayer is locked out. You can play as much of the re- all the, the full featured multiplayer that you want, essentially for that ten hours. Essentially, yeah. Um, so I mean, and this is something we see with EA a lot, where you'll get they just don't want you to be able to play the entire single player campaign in the ten hours. Because, as Brock and I will talk about in a second, the single player sounds like it's going to be less than 10 hours. Yeah, I would have probably finished it otherwise. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then I, I would have never had to download the game. Yeah, like, that's the thing. I, I Like, that's the reason why they do it. I really like the story. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about the war story. So, uh, it was Under No Flag, is what it was called. It was about a British bank robber 
mm-hmm. who uh, was thrown in jail for robbing the same bank three times, which is which actually kind of funny. And he's recruited by this uh, British general to basically go be part of this this new unit that they're putting together um, with basically non traditional soldiers to go like take out some of the um, the, the the Nazi uh, equipment in like, Dunkirk. And stuff. Yeah, which would be really cool. So uh, the first mission you have, uh, you're sort of planting bombs in like aircraft hangars mm-hmm. um and it's it, there was a big stealth focus i found in this yeah. uh story mode i think the other two campaigns like the nordies campaign the one that we saw so much about the one that's in norway mm-hmm. is probably not going to be like that so it's kind of cool to, to have something that's very different from what you usually get in battlefield which is just an incomplete approach to stealth mm-hmm. um and then you had some missions from there and i don't want to go into too many of uh, too much of this because first of all it's pretty short an hour and a half to two hours. Ryan? Yeah? Destructible environments? Of course. Big time. Oh, yeah. Snow falling off of roofs? Not in the mission we played, yeah. but in the multiplayer, yes. Okay. Because the mission we played takes place in Africa. Did you... Okay. Did, did you play as a lady? Not in the first the first world mode, no. Okay. But in multiplayer, you totally can. But not in the story mode? There will... That's what the second story mode is. Ah, uh, so okay. Because the second story mode is in the, the opening one... scene you do. In the opening scene, you do as well. There's a fucking killer opening scene. Yeah, I don't want to rules so hard. I do not want to spoil it. Blew it, my eyeballs out. It, it is was am- sweet. It is amazing. I didn't know. I was so high. I had no idea what was going on, and I was so into it. Yeah. It was amazing. I, was there blimps? What? There was everything. There was, it was like shit going everywhere. Yeah. It was awesome. How does this compare to uh, the last game? I, Battlefield One. I liked opening? it better. I liked it better. I liked it better. But yeah. I think the 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 um. They tried something similar, but they they were setting the tone for what World War II was and how it was different from World War II. It was like if Christopher Nolan directed the start of a game. Yeah. It was mental. It was, oh, it it was, was really fun. I, from a high, not high person when, while playing <laughs> it, it was totally epic and I loved it. But okay. again, do yeah. not want to spoil it. I want everyone... My like, speakers were so up. loud. Plays I was melting themselves. my face. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. There are some there were some incredible sequences. I don't like Battlefield at all. I I love what I played in this game. I was having a lot of fun. It looks incredible. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Especially if you played in in 4K, which is yeah, it, the it action's really tight. Yeah. yeah, it feels really good to get a headshot in this game. Yeah, cool. Like it basically um, with Battlefield One, I think Battlefield One was like a reboot of the whole series. Yeah. And taking it back to back to square one, essentially. This almost has the same logo and everything. Like, yeah, it's a continuation. This is this is basically a sequel to that yeah. game. And it, it is. It kind of is like. It kind of feels like what Assassin's Creed Two was to the original Assassin's Creed, yeah. where it's not super different. It's more of a streamlined, a, a more refined version of all the things that made Battlefield One a great experience. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then adding new new things. Uh, the multiplayer though is what I spent a lot of time with. I love. I, first of all, we talked about the the, the war story. I really loved it yeah. as well. I, I thought it was awesome. Again, I don't want to talk too too much as far as spoilers. First of all, the game's not out yet. And second of all, there's some really good moments that I just don't want to spoil in the other missions. But the multiplayer is where I spent the bulk of the time. I've used up my entire trial playing this game because I got hooked on the multiplayer and that's all I want to play right now. Um, so basically, Battlefield 1, if you've played the ba- multiplayer for Battlefield 1, one of its biggest problems, it was bloated with too many modes. There were like 25 different modes for multiplayer in Battlefield 1. And they all had their own matchmaking and stuff, which of course most it, of them. It wasn't like the standard like capture the flag, big battlefield like the, kind of thing. There was. It's called Con- conquest mode, which is the one that everyone queued for. So if you wanted to play all the the other modes, like right. prepare to be sitting in queue for twenty minutes. Okay. Um, whereas this time around, there are basically three modes, um, and then there's also you have a dedicated server list that you can pick from. So if you don't want to play one of the three main modes, you can make your own server and or join someone else's created server if you want to do that as well. Like, that option is available to you. Okay. So we have the, the Conquest mode, which returns from every other ba- Battlefield game. Uh, this time around feels, if for those of you who have played a lot of Battlefield like me, uh, it very it feels very much like Battlefield Bad Company 2. So it, it basically... I had heard that, like, th- there were indications of that, like, yeah. especially, again, the destructible environments, but the other thing, Yeah, right? the destructible environments, uh, just the way you can spawn on to your allies that are in your squad in order to get ahead on the map. Even if they're capturing a location, you can spawn on top of your allies while they, while they, they take locations. It's really impressive. But one of the coolest new modes, though, is called, um, I think it's called the Galactic, not the Galactic Campaign, 
the the, gr- the global campaign, which basically is uh, Drew. Do you remember the campaign mode from Titanfall One? Yes, of course I do. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like that, where basically you have randomly generated missions that that change from week to week that tell a story between that takes place over three days essentially over like using the maps that already exist huh. but then changing uh like introducing new game modes that change as objectives get completed uh, well does it, does it tell the story just like in the vo basically it tells it in vo as yeah. well as like it actually has cutscenes huh. that they developed specifically for multiplayer which is really weird like one of them i did was like the battle for the the battle for France, which takes place um, in like a field where the Nazis are trying to capture, like basically make their way to Paris. Yeah, and and each mission each day is like if the Nazis keep winning, they get closer and closer to Paris, so the the maps get closer to Paris. Right. But if the Allies win, the maps change so that they get clo- like the so that the Allies are taking the offensive to the Nazis and attacking their their um, sort of. Uh, camps in Norway and other areas of Europe. So they're kind of pushing the Nazis back. And again, you, you, the way uh, it works is whoever wins the the match, uh, that their, that choice carries over to the next one and changes the, the, the map and the story. Well, I'll tell you this, those filthy crowds will never break the match in no line. So, you know, fuck them. You can make it happen. Indeed. Yeah. And apparently this is going to change from week to week as they, because there's no season pass for this game. Yeah. It's going to work kind of the way that, that Battlefront 2 does, where they're going to add new content, like, weekly to this game. Like, the, the, this mode's going to change from week to week. There will be different scenarios that will have their own cinematics and storylines associated with it. Weird. So I'm really interested to see what, the, what they do with that mode. I think that, that's actually really surprising and awesome. Um, but we, the, the mode that's missing, of course, the Battle Royale mode, still not out yet. Won't be out until March, I think. Um, so it do- it does feel like the multiplayer suite, while refreshing, feels a little limited. But I feel, but I think the modes that are there are really solid. So if you like Battlefield's multiplayer, you're gonna, you're gonna love this. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Cool. That so sounds really interesting. Yeah. So I'll have more to say on next week's show because I'll probably have finished the the campaign by the next time we talk because I'm really excited. I'll, I'll do that. that. Yeah. Um. So again, the game comes out on Friday, and I'll have it on Friday. So, cool. we'll talk about that. Uh, so before I get into the game I reviewed this week, because I want to talk about this a little bit, uh, what have you guys been playing? I wanted to play this Tetris game that everyone's talking about, but yeah. I'm also not spending 55 bucks on Tetris, but people are losing their shit over it. It does look awesome. This seems right up my alley. Tetris Effect being the game that brought to Yes, yeah, Tetris, Tetris Effect. effect. Yeah. The game by Mizuguchi, who is the creator of uh, Rez and Luminar. Yeah. Created a Tetris oh, okay. Game. That makes sense then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That sounds really... I, I would like to play... What, I like Tetris. What have you been playing? I want. I wanted to play a game that we talked about earlier, uh, uh, A Quiet Man, okay. but I also didn't want to spend money on that. All right. So tell us about the, uh, A Quiet Man. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I watched a lot What's of... What's the deal with this game? I watched a lot of Let's Plays and stuff for this. I haven't played it because it looks horrible. Okay. And again, I don't want to give my money to these people... Uh, it, it's, it's unique and it sounds interesting, uh, in that the main character is deaf. Okay. So there's like, the sound effects are like all kind of muffled and whenever there's dialogue, you don't, there's nothing, you don't hear anyone, but there's also no, like, there's no other way for you to understand what's going on. There's no subtitles or anything. Well, that's weird. We can't read lips, I guess. If you can read lips, you could read lips in the game. No, I mean, if he could read the lips, then there could be subtitles. The game looks like a PS3 lips. game. First exactly. Off. The graphics are very bad. I don't it's, think you'll be reading any lips. It's not, no, well, because it goes between live action cutscenes right. and uh, uh, like bad like polygon sort of like environments, and it and it flips back and forth a lot. And there's a lot of stuff where like a, a polygonal character will pick up like, a photograph in the game, and the photograph will be of a real person. It'll be, like, a real photograph. Uh, <laughs> and there's, like, there's, like, weird scenes where, like, people are talking. And one of the ones I saw was, like, blew my mind is, of course, the the titular character, the quiet man. He's called a quiet man because he doesn't speak. And there's a scene where, like, he's in in, in a car with a, with a woman, and obviously, the, like, there's some tension, 
because she's talking, you don't know what she's saying, <laughs> and like they keep cutting down to their hands beside each other, and her hand like inches towards his every once in a while, but nothing ever happens. And then at one point, he speaks. <laughs> what <laughs> the quiet man speaks? Is it like when J- uh, Silent Bob speaks, and it's like super important to the story? And. You don't hear anything! <laughs> his lips move and there's no sound! But how do you see... Oh, I guess his, his, the camera's on his face. I guess. That's right! My, yeah! My buddy the Black Nerd hasn't written a video game review in a year, decided to play this and had to write about it because it was the worst thing he has ever played. It's so bad! <laughs> I really want to pick it up on like a deep discount. It's only a two and a half hour game. Yeah. Apparently it's like 40 minutes of FMV. Yeah. And then the rest is terrible, terrible fucking pressing it, forward. It's kind of like like third person, like fixed camera, kind of like the bouncer a little bit. Excellent. Like really bad. like <laughs> poking the greatest games of like, all time. Really bad, like combo, beat em up kind of combat. You're making me wa- actually want to play this. I want to play you it. I this. actually want to play it. I, I heard really. you actually should play it because it's that of level of bad that yeah. it's fun. Plus, so it's like, like, like the procedural animations are really bad and. Yeah, just Plus achievements brought. Achievements. achievements, yeah, achievements. I need to catch up to you on the le- the leaderboard that we have going on. Oh, you, keep, yeah. you keep playing all these easy games, bro. I, I need playing, a quiet man. I downloaded like eight ID at Xbox games yesterday, and that's what I played. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I downloaded an FNV. I didn't get to that though. Oh. I don't remember playing most of these games, so bear with me here. Okay. So after Battlefield, <laughs> I played a game called Stick Type. Okay. Uh, huh? It was like a stick death game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wouldn't recommend. I played Doodle God. Too complicated. Right. I played Agents vs. Villains. You need four Wait, people. wait, wait. Asians? Agents. 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 You need three to four people to play that, and it's not online, so yeah. couldn't play that. Uh, <clears throat> I realized that after sitting in the in the lobby for 20 minutes, wondering why the game wins. <laughs> <laughs> I played a game called Chasm. Don't remember. Chasm. 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 I heard good things about Chasm. I didn't, uh, Sky Hill, did not like, and then Mecha Nika, which was pretty funny and weird. It was like an old school kind of click point, point and click adventure game. Okay. It was, uh, I know she was like very gothic. So I, I was into I, that. I do like point and click And then I went back to Red Dead. I woke up at seven o'clock this morning, which is crazy because I don't get up at seven o'clock for work. Yeah. I usually roll in half an hour late. I can't get out of bed before eight. Yeah. But today I woke up at seven because I wanted to play Red Dead Redemption. Yeehaw! So I played that for about five hours I, before I, coming here. I wonder why I we got like a message so early this morning. I I, I am always I get up at six o'clock every day like fucking clockwork. I was up pumped for Red Dead. Okay. I now I don't know how many hours into Red Dead I am. I have absolutely no clue. It doesn't say. It's the first rock screen that doesn't keep track. But of your do you, are you playing on Xbox though? No, PlayStation. Oh, so that's your problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm about 50% through the game now. Still don't know how most of it works. It's still yeah. very confusing to me. I still fucking love it. I, I need, think it's the absolute best game like I've ever played. I need to ask you a well, very important question. Okay. What kind of hat are you wearing? Oh, right now I picked up a new really cool... It's uh, it's, it's called a... Oh my god, what is it? It's it's not a slave owner's hat, but it's pointing to that. Like the, like a, oh, like a, like a, a plantation, plantation owner. Or... It's called a master's hat. Oh, yes. oh, a that's master's an interesting hat. name. Yes. Oh, yes. That's a little yeah. awkward. Yeah, that's problematic. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm wearing a master's hat right now. So you look like the colonel or something? Like a little bit. Of, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sho- shoving on some big dick energy. I just <laughs> went to the tailor before I got here and really yeah. did. A- I just got to this huge new city. This fucking mind blowing. And then I immediately r- was riding my horse through the city. I was like, "Ooh, look at all the new things I can see." Rode my horse into a guy. Fucking, he decides to pull out a gun on me, and now the town's after me, and I had to run away. Oh. It's really annoying. You literally can't touch anyone in that game before someone calls the cops on you. Well, I heard, like, if you run while in the city, you'll just knock people over and stuff, oh, yeah, and, and they'll call the cops on you. Yeah, there has still not been an update this game that really, really desperately needs an update. I don't know what Rockstar needs a, doing. It needs a medium walking speed. It need, oh, God, it needs a lot of things. <laughs> but the game and the story itself are so damn good. The story's incredible. So let me let me tell you something. When I was a teenager, okay, you were a teenager? I, and this this is this is apt because this is like I feel like I feel like this game is teaching young people life lessons. Because when I was a teenager, I didn't have this game, and I didn't get to learn that like if you do really stupid things, you thanks for letting it. us know that you didn't have this game as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> we would have never guessed. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could have I could have used this life lesson that if you do stupid things, you can get arrested. 
Because when I was a, a teenager and I first got my driver's license mm-hmm. and, I, get, and I, I bought a very bad car. Here we go, everybody. It's uh, my friends and I decided to invent a new game and we called it the following game. Mm. And it's where we uh, got in our car and we picked someone at random in a parking lot and then we would just follow them in our car mm. to see what would happen. Because mm. we thought this would be interesting. Turns, Sounds like a terrible idea. Turns out... People don't like it when you do that, and they think you're trying to murder them. <laughs> That's a very creepy thing to do. Yeah. I, I mean, we were just having a good time. Turns out you shouldn't do that. And the, so the police chastised us and said, uh, young gentleman, this seems like you're trying to murder someone. Maybe knock it off. I was very thankful that the policeman was was kind and did not throw me in the jail. Mm. Uh, but But he did make us feel very foolish because, to be fair... We were acting very foolishly. Mm. So Mm. the more you know. Indeed. There's a very heavy, heavy realism in Red Dead. Yeah. It feels very much like Arthur is a very real man who is not a superhero, like, uh, video game character. Yeah. It is incredibly engaging. Well, you gotta cut your hair, you gotta take baths. I have not taken a bath yet. I've not even found a bath. I don't even know where to find a bath. I just found a barber for the first time, got a nice trim. Yeah. Do people, do, does the camp be like, Woo, Arthur, you stay? <laughs> no, no one does. I think everyone stinks. So Red Dead. It's a great game. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's my game st- of the year. Still playing it. Hands down. Still playing I'm it. still getting through it. Yeah. 50% done. I still have so much more to do. I'm in chapter four of six. What's your horse's name? Dakota. Cool. My middle name. I've yeah. had the same horse from uh, Your the middle game name game. is Dakota? Yeah. Dakota. I didn't Dakota know that. McLaughlin. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's, that's I learned something new about you. You named the horse after yourself? <laughs> yes, I named all my characters after myself, because I think I'm the greatest. No, no, no. <laughs> Character I get. Yeah. Horse, though? Yes. <laughs> Dakota's a great name for a horse, and he's got big dick, like me. Uh, Drew. <laughs> Hang on a second. <laughs> Drew, are you trying to say the horse isn't a person? Yeah. Yes, that is what I'm, in fact, saying. The horse is definitely not I a person. I think that's anti-horse. I don't... No, no. The horse is definitely not a person. I'm, that well, doesn't mean the but horse, it has a name. That doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It has a name, though. but but it's not a person. It I'm be. finally far enough along in this game now that I'm finally getting achievements for it because yeah. this is not an easy game to get achievements for. I was looking at a lot of them today. They have point one percent of people have gotten them. Okay, like zero one percent. The last Red Dead was like that too, right? Was like, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, there, there was there was shit like. You know, uh, like really obscure things. Yeah, yeah, like finding like turkeys, like killing all the fucking buffalo was yeah. one of them. Yeah, there's some serious ones. I don't. Ones. This is not a game I'm gonna go for. Uh, Hundy P. You're not gonna go for the the platinum. And no, no, I'm not. Yeah. There's also a bunch of multiplayer ones that aren't even unlocked yet, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, multiplayer is not up yet. It, it wait a minute. Didn't the last Red Reddit had the weird thing, like the weird like uh, mode where like you had to capture the the different. Towns or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? I think that was the, the multiplayer mode, right? The one uh, with, your po- with your posse? Yeah, but it, you didn't necessarily have to be multiplayer. You have to have a stupid oh. amount of wanted in each town in this game for an achievement. Okay. So you like be very, very wanted? Yes, yeah, very, very wanted in uh, all the towns. I'm very wanted. Are I haven't town. even seen like a quarter of the map, I don't think, yet. Like, oh, this yeah. game is so goddamn big. Texas is a big place, man. It's so big. It takes place in Texas? Well, also Louisiana. All right. I mean, they are adjacent to one another. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Red Dead 1 took place in Texas. In, in Mexico. Well, mostly Texas. In California. Mostly Texas. Woo-wee! Texas. Yeehaw! Woo-wee! Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what you're saying is uh, at some point I should play this game. Cause I think at some place you should play this game. It's really, really, really good. Not for everyone, though. Not for everyone. I don't like, a lot of people are not going to like this game. I think it's like, it sounds like if you don't like games that move at a snail's pace. Yeah, like it's game. not like, a straight out action. The action scenes are fucking awesome. And the soundtrack is so epic. Like, I went to this house, blew up this fucking house, and there's just opera music screaming through the speakers. It was great. Here's how I determine if I will <clears throat> like a video game. Okay. So I'm going to ask you this question. No, you can't have sex. And depending on how you answer, okay. will determine you, whether or not I will. Arthur like this can't video fuck game. in this game. Is the qu- is I've tried everything. Is the question: Can you name your horse? Because you can no. do that. Would Soldier Boy like this video game? No. Okay. But Ice T likes this game. All right. Well, that just complicated. <laughs> Damn. Mm. 
To be fair, mm. I don't I don't think Gru's a big Gears of War fan, but Ice T's a big Gears of War fan. Huh. If that throws it in perspective. Yeah, well, you know. I mean Ice T was such a big Gears of War fan, they put him in a Gears of War game because he was a, such a big fan of Gears of War. That's this true. game might be better than The Witcher 3 to me. But, I, I, but neither one of us liked The Witcher 3. I love <laughs> The Witcher 3. I played five minutes of The Witcher 3. I, I, I still intend to one day get back and play that I game. I played 40 hours of The Witcher 3, and it's 40 hours I want. I don't think you'll... <laughs> that's so weird. I didn't know that. I also don't think you'll like this game, then. Yeah, there you go. But that's the thing, though. Everyone told me The Witcher 3, and it, it, you'd like The Witcher 3 if you like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I love that game. <laughs> I don't <laughs> find I them very similar. I like The Witcher 3 a lot well, better. So there you go. There uh, you go. There's my answer. Yes, I, 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 I need to finish Assassin's Creed as well. Have yeah. you have you hunted any legendary creatures? No. All right. No, I don't like hunting. Do you fight I, a I don't giant boar hunting. in this game that spews poison everywhere? Did you just what? ask if you fuck a giant boar in this game? What? I said, do you hunt a I giant boar? I haven't seen the boar yet. Oh. There's so much I haven't seen. Good. I've only seen the KKK once. Apparently there's a really fun KKK mission, but I haven't seen that either. Right. I did watch, just watching random stuff happen, though, is hilarious. Yeah. Just watching people get kicked by horses is my favorite thing. <laughs> All right. Now, yeah. the other question I have on Drew's behalf, of course. Yeah. Can you play the follow game in this game? Yeah. Can you can. randomly follow people around? You could. <laughs> Technically, you could. There is a lot of follow missions. Every Rockstar game has a follow yeah. mission, though. That just makes me want to play this game less. Do you, do you, I hate follow missions. If you just randomly picked a, a person and started following them, do you think the cops would stop you? <laughs> no. Like, hey, maybe don't do they that. All, well, they will take notice and then call the cops. Right. Yes. There's also, so, there's like... There's some really shitty missions where you're with your team and they just get shot in the head and then you, your mission restarts. And you're like, well, there's nothing I could do to prevent that. Uh, yeah. All right. It's just annoying. Question from, from the, the press pool that. from, from Ryan too. Turford to you about this game. Uh, do you have to wrangle cattle in this game? And if you fail to wrangle one of them, you fail the mission. You probably can. But, but, is, but there's no mission what? based around do you, it. You, you fail the mission. You sheep herd, you sheep, herd sheep at the beginning, kind okay. of. But it was super easy. But it's not like a big mechanic like it, it wasn't. No, no, no. I haven't seen anything Thank like that. Thank fucking God. Wrangle no. or Russell? I don't know, man. Because Cal Russell's no good. It's true. I'll shoot Cal Russell in the face if I see one. It's true. Wouldn't hesitate. No, you got you to wrangle them up. You got to drive them into an area. It's very exciting. Yeah, it was like... An, you got to use your lasso. In, into the box canyon or whatever, right? That sure. was like one of the earliest That missions. was one of the early missions, but then like yeah. some of the missions for the achievements, for example... You had to do it like that again, but in different areas. Yeah. And like, if you miss one, you have to do the whole thing over again. It was annoying. Did not like. It. Yeah. Anyways. And that box canyon ended up being a hideout for a gang later on. And that was one of the modes where you like you go and you fight the gang in the hideout, just like the. Anyway. Just like the OK Corral. <laughs> just like the OK Corral. Yeah. Uh, Are there any legends of the West in this game? Are there any famous like cowboys? I don't think so. Davy Crockett. Not that I've seen, no. Uh, the other one. Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill. <laughs> uh, the Marvel Comics The character. guy from This Will Be Blood. Doogie Howser MD. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no fam- Woody. No, Woody's, Woody's not in this okay, game. Okay, my favorite thing, hands down, my favorite thing in Red Dead was the appearance of Death. Do you remember Death in the first Red Dead? No. In Red Dead Redemption or the first Red Dead? Red Dead Redemption. Whenever I talk about Red Dead, I'm not talking about okay. Red Dead Revolver. We've, okay. we've established on this podcast I that Red Dead not, Revolver never I happened. do not remember yeah. Death. Yeah. So there's, there's the man in black. Yeah. He's, this, he's like a, this guy that you randomly meet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, he's dead, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he yeah. talks about, like, he's basically, he, he talks to dude like he's like, you're going to die. Right, 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 right. And he's like, but he makes all these, like, vague, uh, you know, sort of illusions. Like, I know when you're going to die and I know what's going to happen. Right. Blah, blah, blah. No, there's nothing cool like that. That was those were like my seen. favorite little side yeah. things. No, no, because it was he was such an interesting character, and to have something character that was like a game that was otherwise sort of like corded reality and sort of real, sort of like narrative elements. Have someone who was so seemingly supernatural was kind of cool. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. saying anything like that. No Sasquatch. No Sasquatch. No oh, man. I gotta call up Soldier Boy and ask him what he thinks about this game. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so the last game we should talk about real quick, or at least. Tell you guys about it is the game I reviewed this week, Drew. Yeah. I reviewed a game this week. You did. Can you believe it? Uh, I reviewed well multiple games actually. So I reviewed the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection uh, from our friends at NIS and Digital Eclipse. Cool. Digital Eclipse, for those who don't know, are the uh, the basically the company that did the Mega Man Legacy collections uh. as well as the Disney Afternoon Collection. That's why I was really interested in this collection because I know I know fuck all about 
the early days of SNK, or at least I did before playing this game. Did you play Magician Lord? No, because it's not in this game. Uh, did you play... So first of all, as a heads up, Drew, it doesn't contain any... It's pre-Neo Geo era SNK games. Okay. So uh, 1981 to 1990. Think of that time frame. Weird. For SNK. Uh, so so no, like, no Magician Lord. No then. Magician Lord, no. No the, Fatal Fury. No Fatal Fury. Okay. There, were no, there was only one fighting game on no, there. It was no called world, Street Smart. No World Fighters. Nope. I don't even know what you That's play. what I mean. Like, most people don't know this era yeah. of SNK. That's why it was really interesting to learn about a lot of these games. For example, <laughs> the only game I had played from this collection before playing it was Akari Warriors, which is a, an, an NES, uh, NES game. Which is like a top-down shooter, kind of like a uh, Commando or uh, some of those other arcade games. Um, and I, I just remembered how terrible the uh, console version of Atari Warriors was when playing this because it runs at five frames a second, and you can play it in this collection if you'd like. Um, so the SNK collection includes uh, games like Athena. It includes uh, Atari Warriors. It inclu includes Crystallis, which oh. I think Crystallis is the only game so, uh, like a lot of NES players might have heard of. It's actually a really good <coughs> NES game. Um, there's also um, a bunch of weird, like, old arcade games. Like, Vanguard was, like, a, like, a 1981, like, side-scrolling shooting game. It was kind of like a weird version of, like, Xevious. Um, there's all kinds of really interesting and unique things about this collection. But what I like the most about this collection is someone who didn't know a lot about uh, older SNK titles, or just the founding founding of SNK, is that there's a giant history mode with um, basically like slideshows and all kinds of development documents that have never really been seen before outside really of Japan. Cool. And it basically explains to you how SNK was formed, how <laughs> that how all these games were developed, like some of the early earlier prototypes for SNK games, as well as like where the de design philosophy for like a lot of the like minutia around these games uh, came about. Um, and this is sort of handled, like, head up by the uh, Video Game uh, Preservation Foundation, which is headed by Frank Cifali, um, which is basically, like, he's basically, like, a big, a big advocate for uh, preserving old video games. Because a lot of these video games have not been re released in any capacity outside of this collection since 1995. So that's why most of the people haven't heard of these games. However, a lot of them really don't hold up well. Again, I think the best games from this collection... The main reason to own it are games like Crystallis, which I think is amazing. Because like, I'm looking at the, the collection here, and like Crystallis, um, like POW, and I think like and Akari Warriors are like the only games that I recognize here. Yeah. One of the surprising games from this collection was Prehistoric Isle in 1930, which is a side-scrolling shooting game. Like it's it, it's an arcade-only game where you go to a, like an island in the Bermuda Triangle, and there's dinosaurs there, and you shoot them with a plane, and it's awesome. It's really fun. Oddly enough, Psycho Soldier looks familiar. Uh, Psycho Soldier is the sequel to Athena. Okay. So if you've ever heard of, if you've ever heard of Athena, uh, which is which uh, Athena was an NES game, where Psycho Soldier was an arcade only game. What about Munch Mobile? Munch Mobile is not mm, good. Munch. Uh, this game looks really weird. Yeah. But to be fair, weird titles. This here. collection has a lot of really weird games, but it was interesting as someone who loves learning about old video games or just how. Video games were developed. This was like a, an amazing tool for for doing that. For Pre Prehistoric Isle looks. Oh, I have played this game. Yeah, I have definitely like, played this game at an arcade years ago. Okay, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I still yeah. can't believe like how well it holds up. Uh, it looks like you know what it reminds me of UN Squadron. It's true. You're not you're not wrong with that. I still never played that game. I don't think this is a game for me. No, it's definitely not a game for Brock for sure. And to be fair, I think that this collection has very limited appeal because. They they uh like basically took a wide gamut of very different game genres, and for most people, there's only going to be like a couple games that really appeal to them. But and and for me, there were a couple games that I really fell in love with. Psycho Soldier, like you mentioned, was a game I actually really liked, and and even though it has like weird like English dubbed voice acting from like the night like 1993 uh, when it eventually got ported to a North American arcade machine. Uh, but it was cool, like, getting to play both the arcade versions of all these games and the NES versions, because it included both. Huh. Plus, each region for both as well. So if they had, like, if it came out in Japan and Europe and North America on consoles and arcades, there were six different versions of some of these games. Uh, plus, they're adding 10, uh, 11 more games 
in a free patch in two weeks, I think, on December 11th. Yeah, I can see here the page is like, and more coming. Yeah, there's still, like, more coming. And, and apparently there's going to be more after that. So, like, it's like they left the UI open. So I think for anyone who wants to learn about SNK or just likes learning about video games, I think that this is a, a great game. But otherwise, anyone else, probably not for you. Again, I gave it an eight. I thought it was great. I thought it was a good, well-put-together collection. But not every game is for everyone. So I totally get that. Uh, anyways, that's it for all the games we were playing. Before we go, let's quickly touch on, for, for a couple minutes, of the games that are coming out this week. We got lots of big games coming out this week. We got we got Fallout 76. Yeah. We got we got uh, Pokemon. <coughs> we got Battlefield. Uh, what, where's our hype level on some of these games? Hit we got Man Spyro. Two. Hitman 2. Hitman 2. There's a lot of big games. Okay, well, one of those games we could have left out. Spyro. What are you talking yeah, about? That's one of the Spyro? best of the ones I've Fuck Spyro. I'm, garbage. I'm really excited for Hitman 2. I really hope that uh, our friends at Warner Brothers sent us a review copy. Uh, we didn't get an early one like other people did, but we never get early stuff from those guys, so we'll see what happens. Uh, still have my interview with Clemens Koch that I did that I really hate uh, uh, sitting around. Uh, but yeah, it uh, looks to be a lot of fun, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, Fallout, I am intentionally not playing. I will be playing Fallout. Oops, I'll be playing Fallout. Sorry, there's a hoodie over my mouth. Yeah, yeah. That, that's bad. I'm not excited for Fallout, though. No, neither am I. I'm not, I'm not no. reading very high hype levels for Fallout. So uh, no. We'll see you if, if... It looks like it needs about a year to, if, get, to get to where it needs yeah, to be. If I get a copy of it, I will play it, but I'm not going to spend my money on it. Um, that's not how... It, I'm not, I, like, it's not a game that like I'm so excited about that I'm going to go out and buy my own copy of. So we'll see I might happens. end up with Pokemon only for the holiday season. Might be a fun game to have on yeah. the plane. Yeah. That's a game uh, yeah. I have come in as well. I'm really excited for Pokemon. Uh, I'm doing some business travel this week, and my intention is to have Destiny uh, installed on my PC, the free version, so that I can it's play true. it on the road. Oh, nice. So you, yeah. can, you can level up your character pre, uh, pre-Forsaken? pre Yeah. Yeah, why not? Play through the... the it's true. The campaign again. It actually runs pretty well on my computer. I was very surprised about it. It plays a, a Warlock or something. Who knows? And then the Spyro, greatest. I will definitely not be playing because Spyro is the worst. Well, guess what? Yeah. We're to- topic one next week. I can guarantee it's going to be Spyro. Oh, I'm gonna God. Um, I'm, exci- I'm hyped for Spyro. Just letting you guys know, I'm not available next week. Okay, great. I'm so s- the, s- me and Ryan dog with Spyro! <laughs> I'm sitting out. Actually, Brock, we still haven't done our, to- our, our topic about Bubsy Pause of Fury yet. So oh, good. I think too. we can do both. <laughs> Pause on fire. It'd be the shitty action platform. <laughs> hey, you know what I did play, Drew, after we talked about last week? What? Nuts and Bolts. Nuts and Bolts. I played for a few hours. It's fun. It's a fun game. It's fun. Yeah. One of I, my favorite things to do eventually is like way later in the game, unlocking a bunch of parts and making things like attack helicopters and stuff like that. I really don't like the car. The uh, Yeah, I mean, it's it's squirrely. Like, it's a weird game. It's, it's really weird. Like, the way, like, the... The, the physics for, like, the, the vehicles are is a little strange. I do not like the car. And, and, ev- and eventually, the car. like, eventually you start realizing how to modify the vehicle so that they control the way you want them to. Uh, right? I don't like that aspect of it all, so that's what made me stop playing. Yeah. yeah. It's really, like, when you start, like, you'll start getting, like, blocks that are, like, heavy blocks. They weigh more, so, like, your, the, the, the physics on your vehicle changes. Like, you can make things like tanks and, like, like, like you said, attack helicopters. Yeah, that's no interest to me. Oh, so much fun. Uh, but real que- quick question, Brock, though. Has this changed your opinion on the fact that you once stated Banjo and Kazooie had never had a good game? Yep. No, I'm still standing behind that statement. Uh, <laughs> Even Nuts and Bolts is bad? <laughs> it's not great. Brock, I understand an interesting thing happened to you on the way here. Oh, it's not that interesting. Uh, we're, we're way gonna, past you, that. You were going to tell me about that. It's oh, no. Story. Okay. All, all that happened is was it, I was it, on the subway here because I can't always take Uber like I'm bougie. Yeah. Um... You know, and, when, uh, when you take Uber, you only take Uber Black. Oh, so. uh, yeah, I only take Uber Black. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, no, you know, I was walking, I, I was listening to this audiobook, and it, I, I had only had 10 minutes of it left, and yeah. I was nine hours into it, and I was excited to finish it. Yeah. And then I saw someone I know, and then he started talking, and we ran out of small talk at two stops in, so I had to get off the subway and then stand there and wait for another one because I didn't want to continue on with their conversation. Huh. And I was too, uh, too awkward to just walk away and say, all right, good day. So I just jumped off the subway and had to, uh, had to get on another Why one. Why don't you just put your headphones back? 
Because it would have been rude because he was really into like talking and I didn't want to talk. But when, but you said the talk ended after two minutes. So. No, the, well, we ran out of stuff to talk about. Like so there's so only so many things we could really talk but about. The, during the awkward phase, that's what you do. Or you just put one ear in. No, no there was, it was too close to contact because the subways are always overflowing no matter what time of day you're going. So you, like, you have to like put, put your hand on their shoulder and be like, hey, look, I'm way into this audiobook. I don't really want to finish it. But I don't want to be rude. Or, Would you mind if I finish this audio book? Because yeah, it's really good stuff. I can't believe Dr. Phil finally wrote a third book. And this shit's... This it was actually banger. Dr. Brene Brown. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they were pretty close to Yeah. yeah. No, no, person, not yeah. Dr. Phil level, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I had to get off the subway, and then I waited for another one. Okay. And then got to finish my book on the way here. It felt better about it. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you mm-hmm. go. Okay. I was on the subway the other day, uh, and there was a woman who was, who was beating a man because he took her photo. Oh. Yeah. Did you do anything? Uh, I did not. Mm. I, I did not intervene. It sounds like she was probably okay. Uh, well, I'm not sure the man was okay, though. He, he was the one who was being Well, beaten. he doesn't count. Uh, and uh, there was a, a, a TTC employee there, so I'm assuming they intervened. Mm. You know. Okay. Yeah. The point is, we learned today, number one, don't just follow people. And two, don't take people's <laughs> photos without asking. And if yeah. you see me on the subway, <laughs> please don't talk to me. Yeah, I don't, don't want to talk. Don't talk to Brock. Okay. But I like talking to Brock on the subway. Yeah. Just send me a tweet. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Sometimes Brock and I run, each, run into each other on the subway. We're like, oh, we're both on the same subway car. And then we say, hey, hi. <laughs> we just go back to what we were doing. I flash a nip. You yeah. flash the nip. And there we go about. Yeah. I like yeah. when, like, you know when you don't really know someone and they're like, you see you, just wave. Yeah. We don't need to cock, you know, it's fine. Okay. Hey, what's up, dog? Yeah. That's it. How about that Trump? Yeah, sometimes, yeah, we're sometimes not I do that here. with strangers. Uh, you know, sometimes I see strangers on the subway and they look at me and then I smile and I wave. Like, I nodded to some of our troops today because there was a bunch of them on the subway. Yeah, quite a few people. Yeah, let's, let's not forget, today is... Uh, As we're recording this. It's the Remembrance Day. Yep. You will be listening to this on the 12th, which is not the 11th day. Which is not a holiday here in Ontario. It is not a legal holiday, no, but it's, it is it is a legal holiday for for uh, most of the country for me because I am uh, an yes. employee of the federal government. Yes, and most of the country. Yeah, Pretty there's good. only four provinces that uh, don't sell or don't have it as a holiday. A legal, a legal holiday? Yeah, it's a yeah, it's, it's a legal holiday. For example, in Alberta, mm-hmm. and BC, the greatest right? province. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, mm, let's not mm, get so. Hey, man, I'm just telling it how it is. I'm yeah. just tell, giving you facts. I don't know. I, I'm I'm thinking the people from Prince Edward Island would. Definitely disagree. For sure. There's more of us. Yeah, there's more potatoes there. Yeah, but we're more like more like cowboys than there. Uh, potato country, oysters. That's what they call it. The oysters that they have in PEI. The P stands are, for potato, are, right? Are not testicles. But do potato eating inside? Yeah, that's <laughs> that is the name of the province. <laughs> I've never really eaten a potato outside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what I think about, I actually, I've eaten potatoes while I was camping, but it's not really something I do very much. No, no, you know, no. So just think about. But that. see, here's the th- here's the thing with uh, with PEI group. They've got potatoes, but we've got Albertan beef. So you can't have your 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 steak and potatoes without Alberta. I would That's rather right. have the steak, and you can't have the potatoes without your PEI. I mean, you could, you, you could. could. There are other places you get potatoes. You, yeah. c- you could have your yeah. your steak without. A I potato. mean, Idaho is right there. You know. I just wanted to say that. Oh, I'm a hoe? I'm just going to just shake my head at you, Brock. Okay. Uh, you, am I this show is going on the rails. We I know. I was going to say, up. we should probably get going. Yeah, if, I'm, if I'm quoting Nicki Minaj, you know there's a problem. <laughs> oh, someone need to give her some love. Yeah. Anyway. I feel like she's just probably like, she just needs a hug. She had a rough year. I want a hug she had her. a really rough you're year. Like, Nicki, like, you're cool. You're, f- you're a nice person. Mm. You're, good. you're a good human being. Don't let anybody put you down. Well, we don't know if she's a good human being. We don't know anything about her. I mean, like, I believe in the inherent, like, positive value of all human beings. Fair. You know, like, in, like, a, like a Rousseauian kind of way. Fair. Like, uh, man is an inherently noble creature. Okay. Good. Um, I just want to give a shout out to um, Berkeley Bowl. Berkeley Bowl uh, in uh, full independent service uh, supermarket in Berkeley, California. <laughs> what is, wait, 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 wait. Because, <laughs> why is this because a thing? Uh, they Hold tweeted on. out, uh, what do you mean? Hashtag no nut November. Nuts and often legumes were traditionally a late autumn crop until agriculture advancements made them available year round. And then 
because of the comments that went along with that, yeah. retweeted that and said, we have been informed that the agricultural cycle of nuts and legumes is not what this month is about, <laughs> and we are deeply profoundly sorry. And there has never been a more wholesome thing on Twitter. Yeah, that's uh, really sweet. That's, so, yeah. I like how earnest they are about that. Um, I Yeah, for me, it's not, that's not happened. Uh, is you no know nut November? Yeah. I nutted right before I came here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's time to go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so before we go, Brew Plugs go. I'm at Dean McMill on Twitter. I was going to go to Brock first, but he, he can't seem to hold himself together. So, no. Drew, you're at Dean McMill. Yes. Perfect. Brock, where can people find you? Brock McLaughlin, Brock Star Gaming. That go. <laughs> As for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. That's T-U-R-F-O-R-D. Uh, you can also find our website, game newscom And of course, find us on podcast services around the globe. Also on Twitter at Game underscore Moose underscore Cast. On Facebook at Facebook.com slash Game at Moose Podcast. And there you go. And you can't find me on the subway. I thank, mean, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> God. Uh, because apparently... Yes, because this, where I was not was on, on the subway. subway. Ah! We're putting it together now. <laughs> Is that why you offered me to go off? For Drew McBellan and Brock McLaughlin, I'm Ryan Durford. This has been episode 146 of the Game Moose Podcast, and we're out.